right. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Nuket Varlik from History Department here at Rutgers Newark. Um, and it's my pleasure to welcome you all to our panel discussion on commerce and contagion vectors through time and space. This event is generously sponsored by Rutgers Centers for Global Advancement and International Affairs, the Gaia Centers. And it is uh, one of a number of public events organized on the biennial theme of global health. In addition, we would like to acknowledge Rutgers Biomedical and Health Sciences, the Medieval Studies Program, and the Department of History at Rutgers Network for co-sponsoring today's event. The Gaia Centers have supported our working group, Zoonosis and Society, Interdisciplinary Perspectives of Animal to Human Disease, an interdisciplinary group comprised of Members of Rutgers faculty and graduate students, members of this working group collaborate to study multiple dimensions of zoonotic diseases. Last November, we held our first public event, the Ebola Forum, on the Rutgers New Brunswick campus that brought together a number of experts from different disciplines to discuss the multiple facets of the Ebola outbreak in West Africa. For anyone interested, the videos of the Ebola Forum can be accessed online on the Rutgers YouTube channel. Today, we would like to open the various aspects of zoonotic disease vectors to interdisciplinary discussion. What are the different types of vectors that transmit disease? How are vectors affected by changes in climate, environment, and human initiatives to control them? What are the kinds of human attempts made to control vector populations? And what did these attempts result in? Such questions can be, of course, multiplied, as there are many fascinating aspects, aspects of the study of vectors and various disciplines to um, study them, including vector biology, entomology, ecology, microbiology, as well as so social sciences and the humanities. Today, we hope to shed light on some of these questions while posing others. Before I move on to introducing our panel speakers, I'd like to comment briefly on how zoonotic disease vectors feature in my own research. I'm a historian of the Ottoman Empire with a part particular focus on plague epidemics in the late medieval and early modern era. In my study of plague, I try to envision the history of the disease as broadly as possible in its ecological context. Such an endeavor ventures beyond a perspective based exclusively on the human experience of the disease and seeks to integrate the invisible agents of disease histories, the pathogen, vectors, and various mammalian hosts to the disease. The reason I refer to the agency of these organisms as invisible is because they were not conceptualized as such by pre-modern Ottoman society that I study, not for, um, for, for that matter, not by other um, pre-modern societies. As we know today, the notion of disease vectors is a product of the microbiological revolution of the late 19th century and its ramifications into the 20th. So how do we do study, how do we study the vectors in an age when they were not defined along those lines? Hence, the challenge for historians studying diseases in the pre-modern world is how to identify these invisible agents, to quote uh, a historian of disease, quote, what was invisible to the peoples of the past need not remain invisible for us as well, end quote. Today, we're much better equipped to render those invisible agents of history visible, thanks to the work done by our colleagues in such, in such fields as archaeoentomology, phylogenetics, evolutionary and vector biology, ecology, to name a few. We're in a better position to identify previously unknown disease vectors and their behavior, and use this knowledge to better interpret our historical sources. As part of this effort to approach the question of disease vectors in history, I find it helpful, helpful to explore how past societies imagined disease transmission. Reading pre-modern sources closely, it is possible to find examples which offer insightful observations about the transmission of disease, not only from person to person, but also between species, even though we cannot expect, and in fact we should not expect, the articulation of those ideas to be compatible with modern scientific thinking. Such ideas about disease transmission, direct or indirect, take many forms. Sometimes we find them in the writings of scholars at other times, one can expect to see them surface in stories as metaphors or simply as casual remarks. 
Hence, it's not unlikely to find conceptualizations of disease transmission, either directly, for example, by eye contact between individuals, or indirectly via miasmatic air, air that was believed to have been corrupted by fumes from marshes, dead bodies of soldiers fallen on the battleground, or decaying matter. Or sometimes they figure as snakes, or spirits, or in other forms. In these accounts, it's difficult to identify the vector as a separate entity distinct from the disease entities and the medium through which they are transported. However, at times we can find interesting examples in which the imagination of disease, transmis disease transmission may refer to elements that we might find shockingly similar to our modern notion <coughs> of vectors. Today I would like to share with you one such story taken from the magnum opus of the renowned Ottoman traveler and masterful storyteller of the 17th century, Evliya Çelebi, one of my favorite uh, among the Ottoman sources. In the year 1623, Armani Mehmet Efendi, a much admired mystic in Istanbul, the capital of the Ottoman Empire, encounters the soldiers of plague. According to the story, the mystic had a miraculous vision just outside the capital. While praying, he found himself surrounded by countless numbers of soldiers. These soldiers looked nothing like ordinary soldiers he knew. They were divided into two encampments. In one camp were those dressed in white garments, in white tents, holding white spears. Those were the good spirits, the benevolent spirits. In the other camp were those dressed in black, holding black spears in black tents. Those were the evil spirits, malevolent spirits. Seeing this, the mystic conversed with members of the former encampment, with the, the, the good spirits, who told him that they were good spirits. When they pierced someone with their spear, the wounded contracted the plague, but only to recover and ultimately to survive the disease. Pointing to the encamp encampment of soldiers in black tents, they told the mystic that whenever those soldiers pierced someone with their spear, the wounded died of plague. Leaving aside the mesmerizing characterization of the plague in the form of soldiers and the reference to the distinction between the benevolent and malevolent spirits reflecting glimpses of insights between plague morbidity and mortality, I would like to comment on the spears thrown at people by the spirits. Even though the idea of spears touching the human body and inflicting plague seems to have its roots in older Islamic traditions and perhaps even in pre-Islamic times, it may be worthwhile to contemplate the function of the spear in the story. Why spears? They capture the idea of a medium, a movement, an invisibility, an invisible force. But at the same time, the effects were inflicted, the effects they inflicted were imagined as visible, localized, and individualized. The effects were visible and localized because a plague bubo was to de develop on the spot touched by the spear. In fact, this is very close to our modern knowledge of the location of a flea bite on the human body and the development of a plague bubo in the closest lymph node. It was individualized because not everybody was to be affected by epidemic diseases, but only those that were the targets of the spears were to develop the infection. And also, as also noted in the story, some were to recover. For the record, my purpose here is not to attribute mo modern scientific thinking anachronistically to, uh, to the past. Rather, it is to offer a glimpse into how a pre-modern society imagined the process of disease transmission. Modern science presents a more defined focus on the vectors, mostly in the form of insect vectors. Whether they were imagined in the form of spears thrown by evil spirits, or as disease-carrying arthropods and insects, vectors have been with us for a very long time. Vectors move, they change as humans and the ways we interact with our environment change, and they have a history, a deep history that brings our perception of them full circle. The insightful stories from the past and the informative accounts from the present equally seek to captivate, captivate the agency, movement, and power and they help us understand the vectors in different ways. 
Today, we're privileged to have a distinguished group of scholars who will offer valuable perspectives on the question of zoonotic disease vectors. They will discuss the role of vectors in spreading disease across time and space from the vantage point of their disciplines, including history, microbiology, evolutionary biology, and entomology. Our first speaker, Dr. Monica Green from Arizona Uni State University, is a historian specializing in global history of health and medieval European history, particularly the history of medicine and the history of gender. Dr. Green is the author of over 120 studies and reviews on various aspects of medical history in pre-modern Europe. In summer 2009 and 2012, she directed the National Endowment for the Humanities Summer Seminar for college and university teachers on health and disease in the Middle Ages at the Wellcome Library in London. Most recently, she edited the inaugural volume of a new journal, The Medieval Globe, Pandemic Disease in the Medieval World, Rethinking the Black Death, gathers together historians, anthropologists, and biologists to explore how the new science of plague, particularly genetics, can combine with humanistic approaches to create a new understanding of this globally distributed disease. Our second speaker, Dr. Ellen Barrett, comes to us from the University of Texas Medical Branch at Galveston, where he serves as the director of the Seeley Center for Vaccine Development and World Health Organization Collaborating Center for Vaccine Research, Evaluation, and Training for Emerging Infectious Diseases. Dr. Barrett is a world-renowned expert in biology of flaviviruses. He has published over 150 peer-reviewed journal articles, most of which are related to the molecular characterization development of vaccines. He spent five years on World Health Organization Advisory Committee for vaccines against dengue and other flavivirus diseases, including four years as chair. He has been a member of a number of WHO working groups for yellow fever, dengue, Japanese encephalitis, and tick-borne encephalitis vaccines, and is a member of the virus disease panel of the Department of Defense Military Infectious Diseases Research Program. Our third speaker today is Dr. Jessica Ware from the Department of Biological Sciences here at Rutgers Newark, where she runs the Insect and Evolution Lab. Dr. Ware specializes in evolutionary and organismal biology, entomology, and phylogenetic methodology, and is a member of our working group. Her research focuses on the evolution of behavioral and physiological adaptations in insects with an emphasis on how these occur in dragonflies and dictyoptera, termites, cockroaches, and mentodians. She is the author of a number of publications, including the cover story of Science's November 7th issue in 2014. Recently, she and her graduate student, Dominic Evangelista, found a new invasive cockroach species in New York. And the story was featured in the Wall Street Journal, CBS News, and The Daily Show. Our last speaker today, in, in today's panel discussion is John Cambridge, also a member of our working group. John is a doctoral candidate in the uh, Rutgers Department of Entomology and a master's student in the Rutgers School of Public Health. Over the past several years, he has worked with invasive, sp invasive species monitoring and control in several different systems. His specialties are mosquitoes, forest pests, and the brown marmorated stink bug. Today, he'll he will be focusing on the impact that invasive species have on other organisms in the environments they invade. Each presentation is planned for 20 minutes, and after the presentations, we'll have time for discussion, and our speakers will answer questions from the audience. So without further delay, I'd like to invite our first speaker, Dr. Monica Green. The title of her presentation is The Unknown Vectors of the Black Death. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Green.